Hi, welcome to another edition of the Everlast Power video series. Today we're going to be looking at part two of the Everlast Power Ultra 205P, the multi-process unit. We're going to cover the wiring and hookup of the accessories today. In part one of the Power Ultra 205P video, we talked about the fact that these units are dual voltage. That means they'll run on 120 or 240 volts. Uh, to accomplish this though, you'll have to be able to change your plug out. With that said, sometimes for the low voltage operation, you'll see the voltage referred to as 110, maybe even 115, or as I said, 120. Now all these mean the same thing. Your actual line voltage could run up to 125, 127 volts and down as low as a little under 110 depending on your actual local voltage supply. For 240 you're going to see similar voltages. You're going to see 220, 230, 240 and in some cases you may see as low as 208 listed. Because of the voltage differences in the United States uh, you may actually find that your welder pulls more power in some localities than others. Uh, this unit is rated up to 20 amps uh, draw on 120 volts. So what you're going to typically look for, for most people, um, they're going to find that a 15 amp plug will work fine. Now this is your standard plug that you're going to find on a lot of 120 volt welders. Now with that said, the NEC does allow a D rating for your wiring and your plug for welding because it's a duty cycle limited unit and anytime you have a duty cycle limited unit you're not putting a hundred percent constant demand on the wiring so the heat is not as big a factor now follow your local codes because sometimes your local codes override that and they require a standard type uh, plug in size for the maximum draw of the unit now this is a 20 amp plug here this has got a standard configuration for a 20 amp receptacle. Now your 20 amp receptacles typically will have two flat blades just like this unit with the center of one of the flat blades turned sideways. Okay, we've loosened the screws. Right here, this is a standard color configuration for 120 volt. Now what you're going to find is that in all systems in 120 you're going to have green always is your ground, black is going to be your hot wire, and then white is going to be your common. A lot of times people confuse the ground with the common or the common with the ground. They both serve a similar purpose but the white has to be on the silver screw and the black has to be on the gold screw or the brass colored screw. And of course the green screw will always be with the green wire. This is a little bit easier to hook up for some people. They don't get as confused. But uh, the important thing to remember is with our units on 120 volts, do not confuse these two wires. You can suffer damage to the unit if you're running the polarity backwards here. Now for 240 volt operation, this is your standard plug. This is a series 650 and it is a standard configuration for a welder for 240 volts. You're going to find that most of your plugs do list the wiring color so it's very hard to confuse. Uh, here you have white, green, and black and it listed right here. I don't know if you can see it in the, the light but uh, it does have the listing here so you can't get confused how you wire it. White's to the small blade, black is to the large blade and then green is up here. Now the difference in this is that you don't have a red wire. Now if you open it up it's also going to be fairly easy to understand. Here you have a green terminal that's going to be your ground. In a 240 volt system uh, either leg is going to be hot so it's really not going to matter except for uh, local coding purposes which wire you use here, black or white or white or black, but uh, typically codes require the black to be on the larger terminal and the white to be on the smaller terminal. 
So keep that in mind when you're wiring. The other thing is, this is a strain relief. Make sure that your strain relief fits snugly around your wire when it goes in because the last thing you want is these wires slipping out and pulling out when you're trying to weld and uh, causing problems. This is a constant problem that some people face because they just fail to put this little spacer in or they have the wrong strain relief in or something and they cause a problem by pulling their wires out. Once you've completed wiring your unit, the next step is to install the air regulator. Now this controls the air pressure uh, to your plasma cutter while you're trying to cut. This controls the pressure and the flow. There's a water trap that's installed here. Now this is a water trap only. This is not designed to be a complete air drying system. You'll need to purchase separately some sort of air dryer whether it's a uh, mechanical or a desiccant type air dryer. Locate your goodie bag and you'll pull out most of these items here that you see. Uh, these will be, this will be in a separate box along with a couple other items here on this table. Next we'll want to put the bracket on. Make sure this part of the bracket is turned down. Take your Phillips head screwdriver and simply start the screw into the hole. Next, locate your air regulator. One side will say in, and the opposite side will say out, and you'll have a hole in the middle. Next, locate your quarter inch automotive quick connect nipple. Install it on the left side where it says in. Now you may need to use Teflon tape or some sort of thread sealant. Do not use too much and clog up the fitting. Next, locate your small plug with the O-ring installed. Install it in the center hole. Now, locate your hose bar fitting. This will go on the right side of your air regulator where it says out. Finally, take a 14 millimeter wrench and tighten all your fittings. Notice that this is labeled the gas inlet. This serves for both the air pressure regulator and the argon regulator. You're not going to be able to have both connected at the same time with this unit. Now if you want to have both connected at the same time, I suggest that you find a T-fitting at a local hardware store and install it in here with a short piece of tubing and an adapter and a hose bar fitting. Now, you, that way you can install both and keep both connected all, at all times. Otherwise, you're going to have to take your tubing and cut about a 12-inch piece off of it and install your air regulator like this. Make sure that your hose clamps are tight. To change over from plasma cutting to TIG, you're going to need to install your argon regulator. Now you're going to have a hose bar nipple here. You're going to use the longer piece of tubing that you have left and simply disconnect your plasma cutter side. Leave it attached. There's no reason to completely remove the tubing. Take your clamp, install it on your hose, and again install it on your hose bar up here and tighten it up. When you get ready to install your argon regulator, be sure and purge slightly to clear any kind of debris that might be in the uh, fitting here. Now take your fitting and install it with your fingers at first. Screw it all the way that you can until you feel it get tight. Then take about a quarter turn with a wrench and snug it up. Now if your regulator gets turned down like this, or is pointing straight out. You want it pointing slightly up so that if something were to malfunction with the regulator, it would not shoot out into the room and injure you. Currently, please note that our regulators are listed in pounds per square inch for the main pressure, but our flow rate is listed in liters per minute.
so that you don't forget it's a good practice to hook the work clamp up first. Now simply take your connector here, you're going to have a little tab there, you're going to have a, a recess in the, in the hole here. Simply line them, stick it in, and give it about a three quarter turn till it's tight. When you're welding TIG, you're always going to weld with a torch in the negative polarity. We've added the word torch here for simplicity's sake. Simply take your power connector, stick it in, and twist about three quarters of a turn until it's tight. Next, take your argon connector, stick it in until the collar on the female side snaps forward with a click. Just take your control connector for your 2T switch on your torch, find the groove on the bottom, stick it in, and turn the knurled nut until it's tight. For the Power Ultra 205, we use a blowback style torch called the S45. This is a common torch you're going to find on many different units. Um, this is a non-high frequency torch, so you don't have to worry about electronic interference while you're trying to use this torch. To connect your torch, locate your power connector. Once again, use the right side of the unit to connect the unit. Simply stick it in and twist it until it's tight. Take your gas line, once again, and stick it in here. You're going to have some wires that may cross here. Just simply try to route them the best that you can. Next, we're going to connect the control. This is simply the switch to start and stop the arc for the plasma cutter. Connect it the same way you would do the torch switch on the TIG. Last but not least, we have the pilot arc wire. This is very important to the operation of these units, so don't forget to connect it. You've got a thumb screw right here where it says pilot arc. Simply unscrew it, insert the wire onto the post, and tighten the thumb screw up until it's tight. Make sure it's snug. Don't over tighten the plastic nut. We've disconnected the plasma cutting torch and we've left the work clamp attached here to make a point. When you're welding with stick, you're going to weld with DC electrode positive. Now this happens to be our DC electrode positive over here where it says workpiece. Now for stick and stick only, you're going to take this work clamp and move it over to the right side. So we're going to do that now. Now of course, the only other connection you have with stick is simply the power cable and you're going to connect it over here. This is going to seem backwards at first, but trust me, this is the way you connect stick. The Power Ultra 205P is a great little unit. One of the things that it excels in is portable repair. Another reason that a lot of people buy them is because they've got a limited space and they just don't have room for a lot of extra equipment. This combines it all into one. One thing you need to keep in mind is you can't keep all the torches connected at the same time and you're going to have to make a choice on the rear of the unit on how you want to connect the gas and the compressed air. Thank you again for watching and have a great day.